come with me. Come on. Vamos. We're going to a beach, a warm, sandy, sunny beach in Mexico. And there are 12 children walking with us. And they're picking up shells, putting them in their t-shirts, saving some, and throwing others away. These children, it dawns on me, are making critical aesthetic judgments about the environment. And they seem to have an innate ability to do that. So I, I asked them, why are you saving some and throwing others away? And they told me, because they're beautiful and because they're different. Now, I was impressed that they could make these decisions on their own. Nobody taught them. And I realized, because I was looking for a dissertation project at the time, that they gave me a gift. And the gift was to look at designing environments that would promote the power for them to think on their own and take charge of their learning. Now, back in Arizona, where I was studying for my degree, I had a job supervising student teachers from the cotton fields of Gilbert, Arizona, to the more metropolitan area of Glendale. And I was doing this for 16 weeks, so I decided to do a pilot study to look to see how much power these children had in their classroom. I looked for a display of their creative work. I looked to see if there was a place where they could go and create and invent and problem solve by themselves. I also looked to see if there was any artwork or painting, uh, maybe even an Indian pot that would tell them about the culture and the community in which they lived. Most of these classrooms were overcrowded, disorganized, and what I call a cacophony of visual pollution. The enchantment and enthusiasm and appreciation for a beauty that we saw on that walk on the beach that the children exhibited was not very evident in these classrooms. Something's wrong. Something's not working in our educational system. We need to change it. 30 to 50 percent of our students are dropping out. They're telling us they don't like school. And instead of dropping out, and of course, when they drop out, they have low achievement, instead of dropping out, we want them to drop in and stick with us and stay with us and become very intelligent thinkers. We need them then we have got to design some pretty magical learning environments in which this can occur. There are thousands of classrooms out there begging, begging to morph into technology design studios. We are teaching children architecture and design, how to draw, how to build models, how to think, how to think. And we want them to help us design learning environments or schools that become three-dimensional textbooks. Now, a three-dimensional textbook is the physical environment and all the real objects within it that become teaching tools, because embedded in them in this physical world are ideas that we're now teaching out of linear textbooks. So, we have a program called STEM. A lot of people are really clinging on to this program called STEM. Science, technology, engineering, and math. It's a good program, and we certainly can embed a lot of that in the physical environment. But 
We'd like to add the arts, we being art, art educators and architects, we would like to add the arts and architecture to the mix so that we have, instead of, yes. <laughs> Instead of steam, we have, instead of STEM, we have steam. The, <laughs> it's time, it's time, don't you think? So uh, the built natural and cultural environment is then transformed into ideas that we have taught out of linear textbooks, as I said. And these are the ideas the meaning, the knowledge, the understanding that children will gain from and about the order in the universe. Now, I had a wonderful opportunity to design a high school in Stockton, California with some architects. Right away, we got 100 children and asked them to help us design this high school. We taught them how to draw, we taught them how to build those models, and they even helped us with the site analysis where the school was going to go. After a few months, they came to us and they said, don't give us another high school. We already have one. We have a performing arts center, we have sports facilities, we have a swimming pool, we don't need a, another high school. Well, well, we said to them, what is it that, that you want? And they said, we want a farm. A farm! <laughs> and an environmental study center on the San Joaquin Delta. How wonderful. Well, in a year and a half or so, uh, they got just that, except that it was a middle school. Now think about it. By involving these children in the design of their own school, they save the district money. Power to children! <laughs> and I mean it, power to children. Now, a learning environment as a three-dimensional textbook you probably wonder what that means. The bricks and mortar that we use, the floors, the windows, the walls, the doors, the outside area outside the school can all come alive as these learning environments and three-dimensional textbooks. For instance, what if you need an elevator in a school? It could be a transparent elevator so that children can see how the pulley system, the gear ratios are operating that machine that they use, and that's physics. What about the area around the school that is lying fallow and often just surrounded by a chain link fence? It could become a garden, a jogging trail that helps kids to be more fit, and maybe even a nature trail where they're learning about the botanical things that grow in that particular life zone. And what about the HVAC system? The heating, the cooling, the ventilation system. In Rio Rancho, they have geothermal, you know, 300 wells or something like that that makes that school go. And it could be a museum teaching children something about sustainability. Now, how do you feel? I know you feel really well when you go to Starbucks and you order coffee and you settle down in one of those soft chairs. You feel really good and the coffee tastes better. Now back to the school for a minute. There are lots of doors in schools and they all have hinges, two plates that go together and form a machine from physics. It's called a fulcrum. 
We have a fulcrum in our bodies also. It's an elbow. Body systems are like building systems. So we're teaching something about systemic thinking. Now, all this intellectual embedding, embeddedness in the physical environment is one thing. But as I said, how do you feel when you go to Starbucks? Or how do you feel when you're going into a cathedral? Or how do you feel when you climb a mountain and you see a beautiful sunset? Stephen Bingler, an architectural colleague of mine, once told me that schools are dinosaurs, obsolete the minute they are built. And we need to change that obsolescence so that our children can have power to learn on their own and so they can we can, we can provide architecture that acts as a learning tool to help them understand the universe. Now, American democracy demands, demands an educated populace. Our children, our children, the future, want tomorrow today. Did you like the beach walk? Thank you.